Hello and welcome to another edition of Kogi in Focus, the program that keeps you up to date with happenings in and around Kogi, Nigeria's Confluence State. I am Khadija Mohammed. In today's edition, Kogi State Government receives COVID-19 palliatives from the federal government. Kogi government reduces its 2020 budget size. Appeal court affirms Musa Wada as the candidate of the PDP in the November 16 governorship election. And from the streets, our focus is on this year's Ramadan celebration in the face of the COVID-19 lockdown. This and more when we return. Don't go away. Welcome back. Residents of Kogi State have called on the government to, as a matter of urgency, provide a wide range of necessary palliatives in the face of the global fight against COVID-19. This was the popular view in the state in the face of a lockdown imposed by the state government to keep the virus out of Kogi State. Kogi is one of the few states in Nigeria yet to record a confirmed case of COVID-19 and the state government has come out with measures to keep it that way including sanitary protection, social distancing, and the imposition of a lockdown on movement. The residents say they are happy with the state government's COVID-19 compact strategy. The government has put in place the, nece the, the necessary things needed to thwart the spread of this virus. And for now, I don't think there's any hope of withdrawing the, the, the lockdown now, as far as the coronavirus is still in existence. The situation we have in hand it is necessary that the government should take certain steps which definitely might not be convenient for the people but at the end it's better to be alive than to be infected and not be able to pursue the things you are going out for. They were however quick to point out the need for economic palliatives to sustain them while the movement restrictions last. They should come out with a palliative that will go, that will go to the people, those who are vulnerable, they should make sure that the palliative gets to them. But uh, my appeal is uh, to tell the state government to look into this matter, to know what you to do for local government civil servant and instead civil servant when you say that it is stay at home. There is a substantial level of compliance to the movement restrictions ordered by the state government as movement is scanned on the streets of the state capital, Lokoja, and other major towns in the state. Others suggest a total lockdown of all borders, saying some states that share boundaries with Kogi already have confirmed COVID-19 cases, which suggests if borders are not locked down, some carriers may sneak into the state and spread it. We are still allowing flights from other countries. We will now be claiming that they will be isolated for Why not just stop these people from coming for now? Our own state now, we have, we have lucky that we don't have all those issues now. So let them block the boundary. Nobody to enter Kogi State for now. There is no part of this country you are traveling to that you not pass through Kogi State. So that makes us to be vulnerable. No vehicle should be coming in or not going out. I think that is the, one of the best ways to me I know it can stop the, the rapid growing of this uh, disease. However, there was a high degree of activity at many of the major markets with many stocking up items for what could end up being a very long rainy day for the state, the nation, and the world at large. Coming at the time people are calling for palliative, the Kogi state government has received three trailers of bags of rice and one trailer of gallons of vegetable oil as palliatives from the federal government in the face of the COVID-19 lockdown. Nadia Mohamed, who represented the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, during the handing over of the item said, the federal government feels the pain the people are going through following the lockdown in place in almost all parts of the country and urged the people to support the government in the fight against COVID-19. The situation, you know, is not good. And we're praying that God Almighty will heal the world. Especially that we're starting Ramadan today, and God will use this period to heal the whole world. Your Excellency, thank you, thank you for what you've done and what you've been doing and what you are going to do. 
and uh, we hope that these relief items go to the vulnerable in the society. And I believe this is what you believe as a person. So if you even do it on your own, talk more of what the federal government has directed you to do. Governor Yahya Beluhu took delivery of the items, commended the federal government's efforts, and called on public spirited individuals to continue to support government's efforts at alleviating the hardship of the people through palliatives, especially during these trying times. Mr. President, in his usual proactive manner and very, very responsive manner, decided to assist Nigeria, including Koki State, with this palliative. Thank you, Mr. President, for putting Nigerians at heart and doing the best within your limits of resources to ensure that those living people below poverty line are taken care of. Governor Bello said his administration remains committed to keeping Kogi State coronavirus free. In prevention, in protecting our people and in ensuring that adequate care and attention or remedy is meted out to those that will be affected. In Kogi State, we practice personal hygiene right from the beginning. God Almighty heal the world and may God Almighty heal Nigeria. He also used the opportunity to tell mischief makers bent on causing controversy in the state to desist from doing so. The senator representing Kogi West Senatorial District, Smart Adeyemi, has distributed over 6,000 10kg bags of rice to his constituents. Senator Adeyemi made the gesture alongside the distribution of protective face masks in the state capital, Lokuja, under the supervision of the Senior Special Assistant on Security Matters for the seven local government areas of Kogi West. Other government officials at the event commanded Senator Adeyemi's benevolence. For you to have come with this large number of rice and other materials for Kogi 19 is a wonderful uh, gesture. The type of uh, Senator Smadi, I mean, is in his own nature. He's a humanitarian. He has been, whether there's COVID or no COVID, is a man that is known with giving uh, support uh, to his people at all times. Hunger does not know party. And that is what you have um, exemplified and demonstrated today. Thank you for identifying with us. Senator Adeyemi told the distribution coordinators to ensure the items reach all constituents irrespective of party affiliation. All of us must rise as one people, confront this enemy of mankind. You must see your neighbor as you see yourself. And I plead with them to make sure that the rise gets to everybody that is within our central district, no matter how small. He urged the people to continue to observe all the COVID-19 prevention measures, especially social distancing and safe hygiene. Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello has congratulated the Muslim Ummah on the sighting of the moon, which signifies the commencement of this year's Ramadan fast. He charged them to engage in more charity and prayers to Allah to heal the world of all forms of disease. In a statement released by his Chief Press Secretary, Onogo Muhammad, Governor Bello charged Muslims to align themselves with the universal values of peace, kindness, love and respect for others which the Islamic faith promotes. He wished the Muslim Ummah in Kogi State and beyond a blessed and peaceful Ramadan. He said the holy month of Ramadan for millions around the world has always been an opportunity to renew and strengthen their faith through rigorous fasting, devout prayers, reading of the Quran, reflective meditation and carrying out of charitable deeds. He reminded Muslims that this year's Ramadan comes at a time that over 1 billion Muslims around the world are grappling with the need to maintain social distancing and quarantines as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Adding that personal hygiene and cleanliness, which have been highlighted globally in the battle against the coronavirus, are also intrinsic parts of Islam, which includes hudu, 
Islamic ritual for cleansing and purification that involves washing the hands, feet and head before each of the five daily prayers. The governor urged the Muslim to pray fervently for the well-being of mankind and show love to one another. Wife of the Kogi State Governor Rashida Bello has called on Muslim faithfuls to pray fervently during the Ramadan against the COVID-19 that is presently ravaging the world. She appealed to all Kogites to be one another's brother and sister's keeper at this trying time with the economic effects of COVID-19 biting hard at families. First Lady noted as Muslims, it is pertinent at this Ramadan season to emulate the Holy Prophet's generosity by providing food and basic necessities for the less privileged in our communities, as Ramadan is a special time for Sadaqah. She enjoined all Muslims to observe the Holy Month, recognizing that this Ramadan is with a difference, since all hands must be on deck to avoid the spread of coronavirus. Rashida said that all Kogites must continue to adhere to the rules of keeping social distances, washing hands under running water, wearing face masks, and using hand sanitizers. <music> Towards avoiding the potential risk of the spread of the coronavirus, the Isa Kutepa family has come out with improvised cooking methods and recipes to suit consumption pattern during the holy month of Ramadan and have distributed raw food as sadaqat, also in line with the Ramadan. According to the press statement released after the final distribution of raw food to Adankolo, Lokongoma and Barak's communities, the family said traditionally they provide cooked food throughout the month of Ramadan to start the fast early in the morning and to break the fast in the evening at the Isa Kotepa family mosque. However, this year, the family decided to provide raw food towards avoiding the risk of spreading coronavirus. They said their goal is to feed 1,000 people at dawn and in the evening for 30 days. The statement wished the Muslim Ummah a successful Ramadan fast and urged for prayers for Allah's blessings and divine intervention for a quick end to the COVID-19 pandemic. If you are just joining us, this is Kogi in Focus, keeping you abreast of happenings and developments in and around Kogi State and providing a voice for the voiceless. For your event coverage, information, feedback and comments, please contact us on the numbers displayed on the screen or reach us via any of our social media contacts also displayed. The Kogi State Executive Council has slashed the state's 2020 budget from 176 billion naira to 102 billion naira. Commissioner for Finance, Economic and Budget Planning, Asiru Asiwaju Idris, disclosed this to journalists after the fourth Executive Council meeting in Lokoja. The Excellency Aladia Yabilo set up a finance committee rather than myself, to review the approved budget of prosperity of 176 billion in line with the economic reality. Today, the revised budget as approved by ESCO is 102 billion, 675 million, 58,000, 888 Naira. This is as a result of the, the economic situation of the country and also the, the effect of the COVID as well as other economic issues. The council also approved 1.4 billion Naira for the takeoff of the Kogi State Accelerated Agricultural Development Scheme. Was ensuring that we improve food production in Kogi State. Once there is food production, we are sure that um, there will be enough security and uh, also hard to the food security in Nigeria. Commissioner for Transport, Okoli Baron, said the government has given the go-ahead for a public-private partnership to put the state's terminal park on which so much has been spent to use. The council gave approval for the commencement of the local Mega Terminal, which is 
to house the entire motor parks collaboratively with the stakeholders in the transportation industry, road transport uh, union, and other key stakeholders to make sure it runs. The council equally gave the approval for the commencement of the Water Transportation Agency of Kogi State. The state broadcasting sector is expected to wear a new look soon with a facility upgrade. Commissioner for Information and Communication Strategy, Kingsley Fangwo, said government is deeply committed to this. So council has graciously approved the general resuscitation and overhaul of the state broadcasting corporation. He said that the council also approved the immediate deployment of the Kogi Open Governance and Accountability System, COGAS, a platform that will bring government officials to public accountability and breed grassroots participation in governance. Fangwo said, Council also approved the formation of press and information clubs in all state-owned secondary and tertiary institutions. He also shed light on the COVID-19 computer application. What we are saying is that it is just a rapid test for you to know uh, some of the symptoms that would be seen in a person before that person will be said to be suspected to be a carrier of that virus. Uh, like, are you having headache? Is your temperature high? Is it above this? Uh, have you traveled abroad recently? How, or have you come in contact with anybody who has traveled abroad? So these are some of the uh, questions on the app. It's he also gave reasons why the state government did not impose a complete lockdown on the state. Uh, there is already a technical lockdown. If Nasarawa is locked down, Niger is locked down, Kwara is locked down, Abuja is locked down. If you cannot pass those places, how will you get to Kogi State? So we are on a technical uh, lockdown, but we will not lock down as a state. We want our people to go about their normal activities, uh, taking precautions to avoid uh, coming in contact with that dreaded uh, virus. So that is the situation today. He said the COVID-19 breakout has wrecked havoc on the global economy and Kogi State is not exempted. Fanwo said this is the time to look inwards to create revenue in the face of dwindling oil sales and revenue. The Kogi State Independent Electoral Commission has called for a closer partnership with the police and army commands in Kogi State. The Electoral Commission chairman in the state, Maman Indairi, made the call when he led other honorable members of the commission on a court visit to the Commissioner of Police in the state and the Commandant Army Records. The commission also said it has completed modalities for the local government elections, adding that the timetable for the polls will be released soon. The chairman, however, reaffirmed the position of the commission to conduct each free, credible, transparent and fair elections for the good people of Kogi State. Maman said that the police, army and SIEC had been partners in progress for the survival of democracy and lauded the efforts of the commands in making the state peaceful. The Commissioner of Police, Ede Ayubai Peji, in his response, expressed delight with the visit and pledged the support of the state police command in all the activities of the commission to ensuring free, fair, credible and transparent local councils poll. An appeal court sitting in Abuja has affirmed engineer Musa Wada as the candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the Kogi State Governorship election held last November 2019. The party primary election who had Dino Melaye, a former governor of Kogi State son and many other candidates witnessed pockets of violence. Engineer Musa Wada emerged the governorship candidate who lost the election to Governor Yahya Bello of the APC. The former governor's son, who was not pleased with the primary election, took Wada to court demanding the primary election be cancelled. The Kogi State National Assembly Election Petition Tribunal, sitting in Abuja, has disqualified a witness brought by Senator Dino Milaye and his political party, the People's Democratic Party, 
from testifying before the tribunal hearing of the petition against the election of Smart Adeyemi as senator representing Kogi West. The witness, Mark John, a lawyer, was called to testify before the tribunal by the petitioner, but counsel to the respondent, Dapo Otitoju, objected to his being allowed to give evidence. Otitoju premised his objection on the grounds that the statement of the witness was not pleaded as additional witness in the petition. Besides, he argued that the witness as a lawyer failed to attach his seal to the statement. In addition, Otitoji argued that the witness statement sought to be used was filed and deposed to on February 26, 2020, 21 days after the period allowed by Section 285, Subsection 5 of the Constitution. In his ruling, Justice Issa Sambo agreed with the submission of Senator Adeyemi's counsel and accordingly disqualified the witness. Senator Dino Milaye and his party, People's Democratic Party, PDP, petitioners in the dispute over the last election held in Kogi West Senatorial District have closed their case. Milaye, the candidate of the PDP, is challenging the result of the election, Smart Adeyemi, of the All Progressive Congress winner. The petitioners announced the closure of their case at the conclusion of the testimony of one of their witnesses, Pastor Femi Obalemo. Obalemo, who claimed to be an accountant, told the election tribunal sitting in Abuja that he visited 50 polling units during the election. The witness was, however, silent when reminded that the electoral laws do not permit candidates and their agents to move around from one polling unit to the other during an election. Obalemo said he was part of those who, as earlier ordered by the tribunal, inspected the materials used for the election by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. When asked to identify his signature among those on the documents he claimed to have inspected, Obalemo said he was not one of those who signed because he traveled out of the country. At the conclusion of Obalemo's testimony, the petitioners announced that they were closing their case. The tribunal's chairman, Justice Issa Sambo, then adjourned till April 28 for continuation of hearing. INEC listed as the first respondent is expected to open its case on the next adjourned date. The Kogi State Police Command has bust a kidnapped gang said to have been terrorizing Okene and its environment. Consequent upon a distress call received by the police operatives attached to Special anti robbery Squad, SARS, that a gang of armed robbers and kidnappers in a Nissan Altima car kidnapped one lady named Hadiza Seido at Total Philly Station, Okene, and were driving towards Obangede in Okehi local government area. The police operatives intercepted and arrested one Alabi Joseph Adeleke and rescued Hadiza Seido. Items recovered from the criminals include one GSM handset and a Nissan Altima motor vehicle. Further investigation led to the arrest of the duo of Abdulwahid Solomon, a.k.a. Efosa, and Bishop Energy Cecil from Adavi and Okehi local government area, respectively. Investigation and ongoing despite the fact that the suspects have confessed to the crime. The Kogi State Police Command has confirmed the killing of the vigilante group chairman of Egume Community, Ata Isa, according to a statement released by the command's public relations officer, Williams Aya. Isa was shot by a yet to be identified gunman on Sunday evening in the Dekina local government area of Kogi State. Aya said one Enemaku Isa, a younger brother to the slain vigilante group chairman, reported the incident. He said the assailants came on a motorcycle, shot the victim twice, and fled, adding that the disease was rushed to the general hospital, Egume, where he was confirmed dead. Men of the Joint Task Force and local vigilante group in Ajaka, the Igalamela Odolu local government area headquarters, have tracked down a notorious armed robber named Oboy Sanusi Amaga, who is known to have been terrorizing people in the area. The robber had since been handed over to the men of the Nigerian police of the area command office in Ajaka. This arrest and other several clampdown on notorious assailants in the local government area had been commended by the residents 
who filled the appointment of Onoja James Omachonu as Senior Special Assistant on Security is a huge blessing as they now sleep with their eyes closed. A military officer, Sergeant Abdul Razak Moshud, with Command Army Records, Lokoja, has been court martialed for allegedly assaulting his wife and his six month old baby. The victim of the assault, identified as Firdausi Abdul Razak, said she had been suffering in the hands of her husband since 2014. Abdul Razak, who admitted that she has no home or business, told newsmen that she had to cry out for help to put an end to the domestic violence meted out to her by her husband. It was gathered that Sergeant Abdul Razak Moshud, after beating his wife, inflicting her with bruises, drove her out of the house with their six-month-old son and two-year-old daughter. However, some non-governmental organizations, including Challenge Parenthood Initiative, CPI, National Human Rights Council, NHRC, FIDA, WRUAPA, AONN, Rekan, who have been following the case of Abdul Razak, confirmed the arrest and court martial of Sergeant Abdul Razak. The Executive Director, Challenge Parenthood Initiative, CPI, Yunis Abogun, told our correspondents that the NGOs pursuing the case will seek justice for Mrs. Abdul Razak. Top entertainers and celebrities in Kogi State are counting their losses as the coronavirus pandemic continues to disrupt their activities lined up for the year. As the industry continues to record low revenue in the first quarter of the year, several Kogi entertainment personalities are adjusting to the effects and realities of the pandemic. The National Vice President of the Performing Musicians Association of Nigeria, Piman, Baba Ojonugwa, popularly known as JFO, who hails from Kogi State, raised concerns over the effect of the coronavirus on the entertainment industry. JFO said the creative industry has been dealt with a huge blow with the spread of the virus and entertainers now have to devise new methods of creating and marketing content to survive the times without support from government or any other source. Baba Ojonugwa's reaction is coming hours after another Kogi star, Jumabi, presently in London, cancelled his UK music tour after surviving an ailment that was suspected to be coronavirus until he tested negative. Recently, married Kogi-born ace comedian Saint Moscow lamented that the COVID-19 pandemic is eating deep into his resources, especially his savings. Similarly, the organizer of Miss Kogi pageant and P-Man governor of Kogi State, Abdul Hakim Abdul Salam Adeza, popularly known as DJ AAA, and Sunday Asheda Baye, the organizer of the Little Miss Kogi pageant, both agree that entertainers in Kogi State are economically affected by the pandemic and want the government, organizations, and groups to leverage on the influence of entertainers in the society by involving them in the COVID-19 sensitization campaign. It's now time for this week's views from the streets. The holy Islamic month of Ramadan is underway. It is usually a time Muslim faithful come together to break their fast and hold service of worship. This year's Ramadan will be different as the COVID-19 pandemic has forced a new way of life which includes lockdown and social distancing. We find out from the people how Ramadan will be affected and what can be done still to make the period meaningful to Muslim faithfuls. The day one place will not like camp and will not see food to chop as it encompasses for a house like this. It has affected Muslims and Islam entirely. The Muslim Ummah are no longer having enough time to at least do what is supposed to be done Islamically. In all the activities we do, we are always together. We always join ourselves together. But based on the lay down rules or advice from the uh, medical experts, we cannot carry out this thing. And so therefore it has affected our religion, our worship in this time of this endemic. We pray that Allah will curb it away from us. This is 
where we wrap it up on today's edition. Join us for another package of Kogi in Focus next week, same time, same station. Keep doing to others what you want them to do to you. And remember, COVID-19 is real. Let's observe the required sanitary and social distancing guidelines to keep ourselves, our state and nation safe. I remain yours sincerely, Khadijat Muhammad. Bye for now.